tell me about uh, quickly about the uh, the idea behind the formation of SARE. Um, you, you came up with the idea many years ago now. What? Why? How did it come about? I was doing alcohol and drug screening for drinking driving programs uh, for lawyers and for the courts for people who had to get an evaluation or a screening or an assessment done. And I would do those. And uh, I did 783 of them, I believe, over a course of a couple of years, which is a ton, which is a, and the problem was after I did the, the screening and the assessment, uh, I had to make a recommendation. And some people would go to the drinking driving course, uh, naturally they had to, they were mandated to, but it was my decision or my call to be able to tell the court and uh, uh, that this person I recommend should go for treatment or else, no, they didn't need treatment. This was an isolated incident. Uh, when it came time to go to send these people to treatment programs, the limited amount of treatment programs that were available uh, for them to go to was, was so limited. Uh, here in the capital region, and we've got a, we had a good sized number of programs, but most of them were full with mandated people. Uh, uh, they were overcrowded, and at times, if you sent them to these some of these programs, uh, when they went to the treatment providers, they would be put into groups that were not appropriate for them because th that's the only spaces that were available. And I hate to say it, but it's uh, the fact is is you got to be very careful when you're going to go to treatment to get the right kind of treatment or it can be counterproductive because a lot of people go and you get into the wrong type of a situation, the wrong type of group uh, and you drop out or you quit because it's not working at all or you relapse maybe, you start using again. But the thing is, is then your experience with, rec with treatment has been a negative one. So the next time it comes around, I, I tried that, it doesn't work for me. I went to AA meetings, I went to a bad AA meeting, didn't work for me, I don't go back. And that's what we have to reinforce with people that you just shop around. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we set up SARE was because people didn't know where to go uh, if they had a problem. And we kept saying, you know, come and talk to us. We'll, we'll steer you in the right direction. And what we initially started out to try to do this for uh, the, uh, the, person who was, the person who had the problem uh, all of a sudden we're finding out, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting more calls from the parents or from the, um, uh, uh, the kids or whoever it might be, who's the, the employers, the lawyers. Uh, what do I do with this person? Where do I go? I don't understand. Uh, and I, I, you know, I need, I know need more information. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. And uh, that's where we want to make this available. Uh, we should probably have five times as many people checking our website or 10 times as many checking our website that are not the alcoholics and the addicts, but also family members, loved ones, uh, business associates, anybody, doctors, lawyers, anybody who needs information because they're dealing with a substance abuser uh, uh, to come because we've got it there for you. Uh, you don't have to sit back and say, well, I can't go to treatment. I can't do this. I can't do that. And, and you walk away from it. Isn't the way that life has developed for a lot of people in the pandemic, meaning they've had to stay away from other people, be isolated more, uh, be fearful uh, about uh, what life is going to bring them. Isn't that the way that people who struggle with uh, alcohol and drug misuse problems uh, have always lived? Well, I, I, I think uh, they could be experiencing mentally and emotionally, uh, uh, you know, psychologically and emotionally, the same things that, that do happen to uh, alcoholics and addicts. Things are out of control in your life. What do you do? How do you escape from it? Uh, uh, what's, what's the answer? Uh, and so many times, you know, how we are as alcoholics and addicts, is uh, we don't know what to do, but we do know what to do. We climb into the bottle or the bag of drugs or do whatever we have to do uh, to escape that reality, uh, which doesn't do anything, doesn't help at all, makes things worse in most cases, and uh, just prolongs problems uh, without getting them resolved. Uh, 
but other people can it can come out in many different ways. Uh, uh, for people who don't have an alcohol or drug problem, it may come out with anger and resentment and uh, uh, detaching from people that they they care about, um, uh, acting out in, in irrational ways because they're they're scared or they're angry. And we all know that fear is behind most anger and rage anyway, because they're scared and they don't know what to do. Why is personal responsibility, in your opinion, such an important part of, um, well, recovery from the misuse of alcohol and drugs, but in a more general sense, uh, in being a good person and being a useful citizen of the world? Nobody can do things for you. You've got to you've got to take and do it yourself. Uh, if, if if something's going to happen, in many cases, you're personally responsible if you can be for something you have control over. Uh, and if you avoid it uh, and you don't take responsibility, you're going to be uh, you're going to have to resort, you know, suffer this suffer the consequences. Um, and uh, but if you take responsibility and you take a chance and you fail, at least you took responsibility and you tried. Now, what's happened with the virus is there are so many people who are victims of not being able to take personal responsibility for the fact that they're going to get laid off, they might get fired, they might get the disease. Um, uh, a number of those things that are going to result from this. Uh, it's, it's personal responsibility. We have no control over how long this virus is going to be around, whether uh, as we look down that tunnel that we've talked about in the past, uh, there's twists and turns. We don't know exactly when that's going to end. Uh, so we can't take personal responsibility for that. But it's being able to recognize what we can do, what we control, um, and, uh, and, and, and do the best we can with it and then turn it over, or let go and let God, as we say in uh, recovery, um, because there's nothing we can do about it. Um, all I'm responsible for is the effort, not the outcome. <laughs> We've had to live in this pandemic atmosphere for many months, and a lot of the uh, uh, mood and the news has been bad. But have you seen things also as people have responded to this, that have uh, given you hope and, and made you think that things are go ultimately going to be okay? Have I seen a lot of good things come out of this? No. Uh, have I seen a lot of bad things come out of this? I've seen a lot of people struggling right now. Uh, and I don't, I, you know, you, and you watch the news, and the news is not uplifting and it isn't encouraging, unfortunately. Uh, and I have to look past that because that isn't many cases reality. It's what's happening today, but it's not necessarily what's gonna to happen tomorrow or six months from now or a year from now. Uh, and if I can try to, I gotta stay in the day. I've gotta stay in the day. Uh, and if I can stay connected one-on-one -on -one with people or I can one day at a time be connected, uh, that's very encouraging to me because I can help somebody else and they can help me. Uh, but when I start going down the track or I get hooked up with the wrong people, who've got the very negative attitudes, uh, I, sometimes I have to detach from them because I don't want to go down with them. And that's sort of sad to watch because not everybody's uh, inspired about what's, what's happening right now that, you know, they don't have a lot of hope, a lot of confusion because we don't have any control over the outcomes. It's, it's totally out of our hands. And there's been a lot of hardship as a result of that. But uh, the main thing we try to focus on is you don't have to do this alone. You're not alone. We're all going through the same thing, maybe in different ways, but we all have the virus, you know, looking over our shoulders and has affected our, our way of life, and uh, which will not probably change for quite a while now, however quite a while is.